Sean Schroeder. She is 16 years old, and uh, she has done seven public presentations. People say stuff. Lots of phrases have made their way into our language as if they were words. People say stuff that doesn't make sense, like a wet bird doesn't fly at night. Stuff that makes a ton of sense, like to make the best better. And stuff that makes, has, that you can tell has meaning, but can't quite figure out. Like never look a gift horse in the mouth. Hi, I'm Michelle Schroeder, and this is Lunch. And today we'll be talking about how and why to look a gift horse in the mouth, or how to age a horse using dentition. Based on a variety of factors, the teeth can help us figure out how old a horse is. The saying, never look a gift horse in the mouth, equates age with value. So it means to be appreciative of everything you're given. However, if you are ever given a real life gift horse, or anytime you're considering acquiring an equine, you should definitely look it in the mouth or figure out how old it is. Knowing what stage of life an animal is in is very important as it affects its care and expectations in aspects such as performance, nutrition, and vet needs. This isn't a foolproof method, such as when a horse has had teeth removed or in a case of bishoping, which is when teeth are artificially changed to make the horse appear younger, but most of the time is fairly accurate and sufficient on its own. Starting with birth, a horse is normally born without any teeth. This means that the foal is completely reliant on the mare nutritionally, especially in the first few hours of life when colostrum is vital. Today we'll learn that eight is a very popular number because the central incisors, which are these four teeth in the middle, appear at just eight days old. Within two weeks of the first two weeks of life, all three, all 12 premolars, which are these six teeth on either side, appear. At this time in the horse's life, all the teeth are deciduous. This means that they're temporary and later on will be replaced by permanent teeth. Deciduous teeth are lighter in color and smaller in size than their permanent counterparts and can also be called milk teeth or calves. A foal will start trying solid feed when it's two to four weeks old. If you notice that your foal is especially interested in your mare's hay or grain, definitely increase the amount that you're giving them because both a lot lactating mare and growing foal need a lot of nutrition. At eight weeks old, the intermediate incisors, which are these teeth, appear. At this point in the horse's life, the teeth are at a near 180 degree angle of incidence. The angle of incidence refers to how the top and bottom teeth line up with each other. So an angle, an 180 degree angle of incidence means that it's almost completely straight from the top central incisors to the bottom central incisors. When a horse is eight, about eight weeks old, this is when it will start needing just more than just what the mare's milk can provide nutritionally wise. So this is a good time to introduce pasture if you haven't already and creep feed. Creep feeding means that the foal is giving grain that the mare cannot access. At eight months old, the corner incisors, which are these teeth, erupt. At about six to eight months old, the foal is weaned. Weaning is when the mare and foal are permanently separated, so the foal is fed individually. This is a yearling mare. Compared to the horses we'll see later today, her teeth are a slightly different color. For her age, her angle of incidence is slightly acute, I mean, yeah, acute, but we will see that it's a lot steeper than older horses. Her teeth are also smaller in size than the horses we will see later today. Two and a half years old is when the milk teeth start to be shed to, and replaced by permanent teeth. So don't fret if you see calves sitting in your horse's stall or pasture. And if they're loose enough, you may even be able to pull them out yourself. The first teeth to be shed are the central incisors and then the second premolars, which are here. At this point in the horse's life, it is capable of chewing and digesting all the same materials as an adult or full grown horse. At four years old, the Central incisors are considered to be in wear. This means that the angle of incidence has reduced to such that the teeth actually wear on each other and change the shape. This is completely normal. The second or intermediate incisors, which are here, and the third molars, which are back here, erupt next. The molars do not exist in deciduous form, which is why foals only have 24 teeth, but adult horses have 36 to 42. This is a three-year-old gully. He does still have a near 180 degree angle of incidence, which is typical for that age. And we can 
see that his teeth are just about as wide as they all are tall. His quarter incisors are definitely still cast. And we, it's notable what shape his teeth are. They're like a rounded rectangular shape. Shape of the teeth will come into play later in the presentation. This is a four-year-old building. We can already see a difference in the size of the teeth and the angle of incidence. I believe his only cap is his bottom quarter incisor in this picture. His teeth are still the same shape when we're looking at the occlusal system. At five years old, a horse is considered to have a full mouth. This means that all of the permanent teeth have come in. Between three and four, the corner incisors and canines erupt. Canines are only in present, canines and wolf teeth are only present typically in male horses, so won't be seen on all horses. Canines and wolf teeth both only exist as permanent teeth, which is why there's variation in the number of teeth an adult horse can have. At four years old, the corner incisors are considered to be in wear, followed soon by the rest of the teeth. But because the premolars and molars aren't easily visible on a horse, typically you only look at the incisors when attempting to determine age, especially once the horse has a full mouth. At seven years old, cuffs appear. Cuffs are indentations on the occlusal surface, which is the top of the bottom teeth or bottom of the top teeth, due to wear. They appear at this age because of the angle of incidence. They start at the central and intermediate incisors, and hooks may appear on the corner incisors. Larch does not have hooks. Hooks are little out, sharp out, outgrowths of enamel caused by the angle of incidence decreasing, so the teeth aren't as evenly worn down, and this is why we get our horse's teeth floating. This is a seven-year-old gelding. We can see that all of his teeth are full size. He does have a small hook on his upper corner incisor. There is a difference in the angle of incidence between him and the four-year-old gelding we saw. Back to our favorite number of eight. This is when cuffs begin to disappear. They first disappear from the corner incisor, followed by the rest of the incisors. Dental stars at about nine years old will begin to appear on the central and intermediate incisors. Dental stars are little white marks and are seen near the front of the tooth. They stay there throughout the rest of the horse's life. 10 years old marks a very important milestone when an aging horse throughout their teeth. This is when the galvanic group appears. It first appears in the corner incisor and the central and intermediate incisors soon follow. The galvanic group is seen on the front of the tooth, starting at the root, and is visible for many years. At this point in the horse's life, the incisors begin to round. So this means that they won't be the same rectangularly, the rectangular shape that we saw in our younger geldings and yearling, ma yearling mares. This is a 10-year-old gelding. His galvanic group is especially present on his intermediate and central incisor, but is still there on his corner incisor. We can see that his angle of incidence continues to decrease, and that his incisors are definitely exhibiting a more rounded shape. At 11 years old, a horse is considered to have a smooth mouth. This means that all the cuffs have disappeared. This tooth right here would be considered smooth, because although it isn't perfectly flat at the top, there's not an obvious indent. At 13 years old, enamel spots appear. Enamel spots refer to this dark circle in the middle of the tooth and appear at 13 years old. At 13 years old, you can guess that the galvanic groove is probably about a third of the way down the tooth. This is a 13 year old galvanic. He doesn't yet have visible enamel spots. His galvanic groove is more significant than the 10 year old galvanic we saw, and the angle of incidence is slightly more acute. At 15, if there were any remaining cups from when a horse reached a smooth mouth, they are definitely gone. And the galvanic groove is about halfway down the tooth. At 17 years old, all the teeth have become angular. This tooth represents a tooth that is almost angular, but, not, but still retains some roundness. And the enamel spots will have disappeared at 17. At 20, the galvanic groove is to the occlusal surface. That means that it's all the way down the tooth. Spaces may begin to appear between teeth, and the angle of incidence may be reduced to less than 90 degrees, which is a lot different than the almost 180 degrees we saw in our younger horses. This is a 20-year-old mare. Because of her paramount, it's hard to judge her angle of incidence. However, 
Her teeth are a great representation of what triangular teeth are, look like towards the horse is 17 years old, and her galvanized ribs are still present. She doesn't have spaces between her teeth yet. Once the horse reaches 20 years old, there aren't any obvious landmarks like there were throughout the teeth. However, the more one of the tooth is, the older the horse is. Uh, uh, the dental star and the galvanized groove remain throughout these ages. And spaces may increase, de increase between the teeth, but that's not always the case. At this time, since the teeth are so worn, um, the horse may not be able to chew the way it used to, so it can't be as reliant on pasture, so you have to increase how much hay and grain you're giving it, and it can't chew everything like it used to. So that might be when you have to consider giving it soaked feedstuff. This is a very case-by-case -case basis, so it's not like automatically your horse is 21 and you need to change their whole diet. This is a 23-year-old gully. We can see that his teeth are still the same triangular shape. He still has galvanic groove and a dental star. There are some teeth that we don't have spaces between them, but overall, they just look more worn down than the 20-year-old mare we saw today. Let's see what you learned today. I want you to try to come up with an age of how old Larch is. Be I never knew Larch alive, so I actually don't know how old she is. When we're aging a horse, the first thing we check is that what teeth they have. It appears that Larch has all of her adult teeth, so I know that she's at least five. They are all full size, so it also leads me to believe that she was at least five when she passed away. Her angle of incidence is hard to judge because it's Hard to get the skull to line up perfectly, but it does appear to be more on the acute side. So I know that Larch was at least seven when she passed. I believe that Larch was about 15. The obvious signs I used were our picture two. The Galvin's girl looks a little bit different on her compared to the pictures of her, and is highlighted in green. The Galvin's groove is only about halfway down, if not slightly more down her tooth. That would lead, you, lead me to believe she's a little bit later in her teeth than 15, because of the fact that she still has enamel spots highlighted in purple, and her teeth aren't fully triangular yet, traced in purple, I believe that she wasn't closer to 20 than 15. Because of her knowing her, I was able to figure out her age, I'm able to customize how I care for her. So I, if she was a living horse, I would know that she's still capable of working and showing um, as younger horses are, and can still eat the same diet she's been like, eating likely her whole life, but I know that within 10 years, I, ten, the next 10 years, I'd probably have to start making changes to her care and what her use is. These are the sources I used. My most helpful source was Horse Anatomy, a coloring atlas by Robert, Robert Canyon. And my favorite horse to turn to anything horse related is Horse Smarts by the American Youth Horse Council. I hope today you learned how and why we should look our gift horse in the mouth, although you should still be appreciative of everything you're given. Thank you for watching today, and are there any questions? Why did you pick this topic? The question was, why did I pick this topic? So honestly, I just wanted an excuse to use large in a presentation before I aged out, and this seemed like the easiest thing to go for. Can a mare have canines? The question was, can a mare have canines? So technically, yes, a mare would have canines. Um, I believe Mar large is a mare. Um, that's why I refer to it as she because in her, in her dental space, which is here, it's where the bit sits, there aren't any teeth. Um, that's where the wolf teeth would sit and the canines would be a little further back. But typically that's more of a galloping or stallion thing. But it's not like something's wrong with your mare if she has canines. And what is floating? The question was, what is floating? Floating is, um, the, since the teeth, horse's teeth are never growing, they can get sharp spots in their molars and premolars too, not just hooks on their corner incisors. And so then you risk them like cutting their cheese, cutting their chin. So your vet or equine dentist comes out and they take a float, which looks like a farrier's rasp, and essentially file everything down so it's nice and smooth in their mouth. And um, they're not, you know, drawing blood on themselves when they eat. Flo floating will not change the way a teeth looks really like bishoping was, which bishoping is only when people are trying to hide something, floating is important for their health. Any other questions?